Hello, this is Steve, Dichroic Glassman. We're going to take an even further look at this borosilicate glass and some of its properties out loud and see what it's like to utilize this new cutter that just arrived that really makes life easy. What are you looking at here? These are some really cool little squares and rectangles that I cut out that are highly accurate. Uh, these, some of these are drilled so that I can make jewelry with it. If you're into that kind of stuff and you want to make some geometric shapes, bracelets, necklace, all that kind of stuff, they're making some really high quality vinyl these days. That's a decal of the flower of life and the, earring, the other side gets the other, or hey, mix them up. They're kind of cool. Um, anyway, so let's cut some of this glass up and talk about it a little bit. Especially if you've got ideas and you want to start making structures. Some, check out Google Dichroic Sculptures or, light, or Dichroic Objects and you'll find out the diversity out there. You'll see a lot and then, you won't, and then, then you'll think, hmm, there's definitely room for more. And especially now that I've seen some pictures, I got some ideas. So, yes, coming up in a special group that I want to create uh, where we're going to utilize various shapes and talk about the, uh, the sizes of the boro and the tubing and this and that. So, uh, kind of want to form a crowd that's into making uh, objects where you might sandblast, you might etch business designs that create dimensionality. If this was in the sunlight, we'd get some really uber rainbows all over the place. We're kind of getting some on this board right here, just from this glass, just sitting there on a real dark matte board. It's highly refractive stuff. Reflective, refractive, doesn't matter. It's bouncing off. Light thinks this, light thinks this glass is a mirror. And it's not a mirror. Well, it's mirror enough to fool the light. <laughs> uh, it's the only glass that I know of that can rainbow both sides at the same time on the glass, uh, on the ground, from uh, the rainbow on either side. One reflecting, one transmitting. It's fascinating glass. So um, I cut these strips up. And if you have use for strips because you want uniform sizes for your jewelry and you want to depend on accuracy this new cutter this diamond cutter is the only cutter in the conversation so I'm gonna set up my um, camera here I might mess up I might not let's <laughs> um, I don't practice these videos I you know me by my way of getting around, raw videos, non-edited, jiggy camera, you know all this stuff, but bear with me. Many people claim <laughs> that it's of great benefit, my wackadoo form of teaching. So let's go into this. Now, this, what's weird about this cutter, there's no... There's no moving roller. There's no nothing. Nothing rolls. It's a fixed diamond, an industrial diamond in a mound of something or other. I can't tell you. I've not looked at it with a magnifying glass. Uh, I'm going to go get my magnifying glass. We might look at that uh, at another day. But anyway, it's just a cheap industrial diamond. And you don't want to use this diamond cutter on your stained glass. Folks, you know, stained glass is a very soft glass, so you're sort of defeating your purpose by using a very sharp tool in mud. It's just bleh. It's, and it could break the tip. I have overused these cutters. Already I've cut several thousand cuts. I did this for a production uh, because I'm getting ready to do some structures that's going to call for it. But uh, Anyway, I need accuracy. I want these things to stack up like a deck of cards when I'm done, and this cutter can do it. Now, what's also really cool about this glass, folks, it, it comes in no textures. Borosilicate is a scientific glass. Initially, it was a scientific glass until the torch arrived on the scene as far as production goes, and we're at our current state of where it's at, which is one of the most 
exciting uh, art forms today because it's growing by the minute. Well, this glass is a mere coat. It's perfect for the optics. I mean, it is blemish-free, no, tex uh, no texture, um, and but the downfall is it doesn't come in any opal colors. All, boral silicate is a clear glass, only comes in clear, and then they put their dichroic coating on a clear glass. Now, the coating in here is a deep, it's a indigo blue, whereas the coating on the same glass here is yellow. So it's a clear glass. This coating, this metal oxide configuration creates a very dense mirror coat. Man, and you get in the sun, this beams you in the eyeballs. Yellow, it's very transparent. It's very important that in your collection, in your building, and in, in stuff, these structures, that you have the two basic colors you want to have on hand so that your deeper colors come through is yellow and cyan. This video is not about the diversity of colors, it's just about the generality of the borough. But this is yellow, which seems like a pretty blah color, it's one of the most it's one of the most important facilitators so that the deeper colors can come through it, no matter if they're light or dark or what have you. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cut some, let's see, I'm hoping, I'm gonna try it on both sides. This is set up for three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna cut on the non dichroic side. Cooperated. Now I'm gonna cut it on the dichroic side. Listen for the scratch. It's got a really kind of a rough throat kind of a, oh, didn't work so good on that side. This glass likes to be cut. Now I'm going to score this off to the side. This glass likes to be cut on... <laughs> the answer is the side it wants you to cut it on. This is a very peculiar glass. It's the strangest glass I've ever encountered in my glass life. However, I got to tell you, Holy cow, it's the funnest glass I've ever put my hands on. And it's a crabby glass. Initially, when I tried to use my conventional cutter, shattered the glass. So, if I use and this piece of glass on the non-dichro side, now, there's an etiquette about how I'm doing this, folks. Like an aircraft carrier, you don't want to come in there and crash the deck. So what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to use the aircraft carrier because it kind of makes sense. I want you to come in for a slow approach. Let's see if I'm in there. Yes. You want to approach the field slowly and set it down. Follow through. That's how you, you don't even need pliers. And this is... Um, one sixteenth, oh, five sixteenths. That's crazy. I can't cut stained glass. <laughs> and stained glass, let's see, we'll get that crappy one out of there. That's the only crappy one. Okay. And stained glass, I can't cut. That's, that's sweet. You can see the accuracy. This is crazy accurate. So having that kind of ability of accuracy, and then if you have a flat disc grinder or even wet, dry sandpaper, folks, you can rub it around in wet, dry sandpaper, a piece of glass, you'd be really a patient person. <laughs> you'd want to go mechanize soon. But literally, you can go to a true value hardware store and buy wet, dry sandpaper. Ask the person behind the counter, or, you know, the helper there, and it looks black, and it's very smooth, and you're literally going to put a teaspoon of water on the sandpaper, and you're going to rub your glass around in it, and it will, um, get, will grind your glass adequately. And it's very surprising for $2 a sheet. Check that out. So we've already proven at 3 sixteenths of an inch, holy cow, I got crazy accuracy. Now this next cut, you already know what's going to happen.
Ta-da. Now I'm going to turn it over and try it on the opposite side. You're saying, what difference does that make? You'd be surprised. Like I said, this is the crabbiest glass I've ever dealt with. That cut, it doesn't sound, well, it works great on the yellow. No resistance. Some dichroic, these colors, uh, sometimes have a, have a degree of being cooperative or non-cooperative based on the metal oxides. It's a very funny thing. Most people don't cut dichro on the dichroic side. When you're fusing glass, you're cutting it on the opposite side. Dichro is generally always coated on the textured side of the glass. And that's the side you don't cut. So in this glass, not a lot of folks have messed with optical quality dichro. It has different tendencies than the conventional stained glass wisdom that you and I have been accustomed to. This glass is a different animal. Remember the coefficient of 33, the low number means hardness scale. Stained glass is up in the 80s and the 90 range. So it, this glass here is three times stronger. Now let's do something here that's kind of cool. Remember this cutter head does not move. So if you think you're going to buy this cutter to make your stained glass, again, you're going to break it immediately because the textures that are on the back of a stained glass, like in CD, one of those holes and you break the diamond tip off. <laughs> it's that easy. This is as smooth as silk, so therefore you don't have any resistance and drag that a clear texture will, because it's a soft glass, give to you. So it's very important that you keep in mind, do not buy this to make your stained glass world any better. Now, this is designed only for straights. I'm going to utilize it, and I'm going to the distance between the tip and the butt, the back end, is about an eighth of an inch. So I drew with my magic marker, 